If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I see 1111 everywhere. And I don't know what this means. But yesterday was January 11th, and I happened to pick up my phone at 11 11 a.m. And I thought, this has got to be a portal to something. I need to like make a wish. What, what is it I want from my life? And the only thing I could come up with was inner peace. I don't want to feel stressed out, burned out, or overwhelmed. I don't expect life to ever be perfect, but I want to be present for it and not mentally freaking out all the time because that's what it feels like in this brain. Most most of the time. And to my own credit, I've been doing a lot to move myself in that direction already. But let's face it, that's like taking a train ride from Austin to India. So it's gonna be a long journey. And the real reason this came up is that I've been doing a lot of research on dopamine lately. And now that I know what I know, I can't unsee it as it relates to my own life. So I thought I'd share some of that with you today because I bet you're dealing with a lot of the same things that I'm dealing with. And I feel like we could all do a lot better in life if we knew how to manage our dopamine levels and really understood why it's so important. So that's what we're gonna get into in today's video. And of course, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Karen McGill. I am an ADHD coach and creator, and I am here for the busy, ambitious brain that want to start and finish and do things, but they lack dopamine until today. So let's get into it. So like I said, I've been doing a lot of research for this coaching program I'm developing called the ADHD Reset. And a lot of it revolves around the role dopamine plays in our inability to get started in things, follow through with them, and then feel good about what we just accomplished. And the problem is if we don't have enough dopamine, none of that is possible. And this was really blowing my mind as it relates to ADHD because research shows that we have naturally lower levels of dopamine in our system to begin with, which is why it's so much harder for us to get started on things and actually follow through. So if you're tired of hearing people give you dumb suggestions, like you should just use a calendar and a to-do list, then today's video is going to give you the ammo you need to slap back on those unsolicited pieces of dumb advice, but also show you how to actually manage your dopamine levels so that you can do the things you wanna do and have the life you wanna live. So here's the interesting thing about dopamine. When it spikes, our brain immediately wants to seek homeostasis. So instead of gradually dropping it, it will make it crash and then it'll eventually come back to a baseline level. But over time, if we're always spiking our dopamine, that baseline level gets higher and higher, meaning that in order to get the same dopamine effect and the same satisfaction for something, we need more of it. It has to be more intense. And we're always then chasing and craving more and more dopamine. And the more we spike, it, the more it crashes. And our energy levels and our attention levels and our focus is all over the freaking place. And that is true for all brains, which is why a lot of us are thinking that we're all a little ADHD. But here's the thing, if you were actually born with a lower baseline level of dopamine, you are also hypersensitive to this up and down. So every time it gets really high, it crashes even more and makes it more difficult to find a natural baseline where we can be productive, normal human beings. Now, dopamine is a neurotransmitter transmitter that governs focus, motivation, and reward. So let's break that down. If you don't have enough dopamine in your system, either because it's doing this or you just have naturally low levels, then you're gonna have a hard time finding the motivation to start tasks, having the focus to follow through on tasks. And because you aren't able to do those things, you also don't get the dopamine reward of completing a task. And even when you do, that dopamine reward is somewhat lackluster. So that is the basic chemical reason why we might struggle to start things and actually follow through with them. It's not always the case of low dopamine. It can also be that we're committing to too much or we don't have the right point of entry or we really don't wanna do the thing or we are in some other way emotionally dysregulated and can't focus our attention on the task at hand. But sometimes, I suspect a lot of the times, it can be because our dopamine is all over the place. And unfortunately, that's not even the full picture because as we go through time feeling this craving or starvation of dopamine, it also turns down the lights on our life. Everything starts to feel a little more dull because it doesn't give us the same reward that it used to. Like think back 10 years ago to the little dopamine hit you would get from sharing your lunch on this new platform called Facebook. Now you need to be scrolling TikTok for at least 30 to 40 minutes in order to get even remotely the same level of satisfaction. And that happens with everything. And I started to notice that in my 
own life. The little things that used to give me satisfaction were less enjoyable. And it seems like that happened around the same time as the pandemic when we all became so much more reliant on screen time. So gardening, going out on date nights, going for little weekend adventures. It's not that I don't want to do them, but I don't have the same motivation to do them. My enjoyment or excitement and anticipation around doing those things has diminished so much to the point where it's like thinking about going away for a weekend now just feels like oh, a logistical nightmare and there's so many steps and we could just stay home on the couch as opposed to getting out enjoying life. And as a result of that, I have seen my life get a little smaller and a little smaller. And that process is called anhedonia. I believe I'm saying that right. It's just basically the shrinking and shrinking of enjoyment in your life. And it correlates with a lot of other mental health conditions like depression or anxiety. So no wonder coming back to this moment, I look at my phone and I'm making a wish for my life that all I wanna have is inner peace. It's not just about feeling zen 24 seven, it's about feeling the same level of enjoyment for the small things in life that used to bring me pleasure, but no longer do. I wanna get that back. And the more I read about managing dopamine levels, the more I'm convinced that with a few small tweaks, I can get that back, along with my motivation to get things done and my ever dwindling attention span. So if you are leaning in wondering, how do we do this? Like I'm on board. I will get to some very practical steps in a minute, but I wanna start off with something that I think is very important for those of us with ADHD, and that is deliberately choosing less. Here's why. There's this thing called the cycle of emotion, where we all start off with this brand Brand sparkly new idea. This is going to be it. It's going to be awesome. And we're really excited about it. And we get a little dopamine hit from the excitement of talking about this thing we're going to do, right? This is called uninformed optimism and ADHDers spend a lot of time there. And because it gives us a little squirt of dopamine, it might give us the motivation to actually get started on this great idea that we have. So we start trucking along on this idea and all of a sudden we come up against repetitive tasks. It's boring. It's difficult. So now all of a sudden, all that juicy dopamine we had around the sparkly idea starts to drain and it becomes a bit of a drag. And we either poop out at that point or we make it to what's known as the valley of despair. And that's where things are really hard. If it's an ongoing project, you start thinking that your efforts suck or they're not right or you're going to fail. And the valley of despair is where dopamine completely tanks, right? And here's the thing. If you can somehow make it past the valley of despair, you then get to, I think it's called informed optimism, where you still see how hard it is, but for whatever reason, you are able to push through. And eventually you get to a sense of fulfillment. You complete the thing. Whether it's successful or not is an entirely different story. But if you are able to see whatever it is you're working on to completion, you get a good hit of dopamine. Now, here's the thing with ADHDers. We start with this uninformed optimism all the time, right? Bright, sparkly thing. And this is going to be the thing is going to be different from all the other things and we're going for it, right? So we start on down this adventure and immediately it starts to get hard, boring, repetitive, all of those things. And at that point, if what we've decided to work on doesn't have any significant meaning for us, like we're not emotionally connected to it, that is where we generally poop out. And we then go back to uh, uninformed optimism and start all over again with the same cycle. If it is something that's meaningful for us, we may be able to get to the valley of despair if we're lucky. If we don't have the right support mechanisms in place in order to push through the valley of despair, whether that's, you know, accountability or body doubling or urgency, like if we don't get this done, we're going to go to jail. If we don't have any of those things to really fire up our nervous system, we will poop out in the valley of despair and then again, go back to uninformed optimism. So let's pause there because I know I'm not the only one who finds himself in that cycle a lot. And this can be big major life events like a new career or going to university, or it can be small things like the planner that you thought was going to solve all of your problems, but it turns out it's not going to do that. So you end up choosing another planner. If we stay in that cycle, not only do we end up with a ton of unfinished projects, a bunch of things that we've invested in, but never followed through with, and all of the financial or clutter aspects that come along with that, I think the most detrimental piece of it is that we lose trust in ourselves, right? Like if we know that we 
are only going to poop out in the valley of despair, then it gets to the point where we don't even start trying new things, right? Because we know it's never gonna work out. So we just stay up here in this very small life. And the detriment of that is not only the lack of self-trust and the depression that might follow or the way it shapes your identity of being a person who starts things but never follows through, but because you rarely follow through to the end, you also don't get the dopamine reward of seeing a job through to completion, which then compounds around that idea of not enjoying things. So there is a lot of good reasons to be able to push through that valley of despair and see things through to completion, even when they're hard. And how do we do that? Well, it starts with something that I've talked about a lot, and it is not even on this diagram. It starts with pausing. Before we ever get into that state of informed optimism, where we think this new thing is going to be the thing, we've got to start there with a pause and remember that this is the cycle we might be bringing ourselves into. And rather than choosing from a place of, I'm never gonna be able to finish, so I'm not even gonna start, you wanna start from a place of self-compassion. Like I have gone through this cycle a million times and now I know why this might be a chemical deficiency. But the good news is that I have options and I can make better choices for myself if I pause and ask myself, number one, is the outcome I'm going for going to be worth the effort it's gonna take for me to get there? Number two, am I trying to solve an existing problem in my life by trying to add something new to my plate rather than sitting with the problem and seeing what needs to be removed or fixed because that's really hard. And it's a lot easier to add something new to your plate, believing that this thing is going to be the thing that fix your problem when you know the problem is 14 layers deep and you just don't wanna go there. And I know that's something I do because as I start something new and I start inching towards the valley of despair and I realize this isn't gonna fix the problem that I have over over here, I will drop it and then start again with a new idea, hoping this next thing is gonna fix the problem down here, but it never will. And number three, the third thing I noticed that I do and a lot of my clients do as well is the spray and pray approach. And that's when you have like a goal list or an intention list that's longer than a roll of toilet paper. And you know that you have a tendency not to follow through on things. So the more things you start, the more chances there are that one or two things might actually be successful or go to completion. And that is absolutely the worst thing you can do. Because the more things you start at once, obviously the less momentum you're going to make in any direction. And the interesting thing that I learned from Dr. K, shout out to Healthy Gamer GG, is that when you attempt to do a whole bunch of things at once, the small amount of dopamine that you do get from starting and the excitement and anticipation has to be shared amongst all of those goals or ideas or dreams. So think of dopamine and motivation like a pizza. And if it's just you and one goal, then you you each get a big slice of pizza. But if it's you and 14 of your favorite goals that you want to accomplish in the next week, then you all have to share from that measly squirt of dopamine, which will then be used up very quickly and you will get absolutely nowhere. So instead of doing those things, I encourage you to think of one thing that you want to move forward to completion. It can be a goal, an outcome, I don't care what it is, but keep it at that one thing and choose it because it's important and the outcome will be worth that valley of despair. So that is how you become the person who says they're going to do something and actually follow through with it. It is also how you start to optimize your dopamine levels so you can start enjoying your life again, the small satisfactions that I think we're all starting to miss. But there's so much more I want to share with you on how to manage your dopamine in a very practical and tactical way, both in your morning routine and throughout the day. So if you're ready to hear it, click on this video next and we'll get right into it.